Good morning, Jesus, the Son of God, bless you every day of your life. I'm Pastor Maria Guerrero. The teaching today is the third part of the Daniel's book from the Bible, chapter 9, verses 1 to 27. This is very important series because it's the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful books in the Bible, Daniel's. And the title is Daniel's Prayer of Intercession. You see, this is what we were doing this morning, intercession for a family, for a son, for the children in the school, from take the demon away, away from us and from everyone. So, in the first verse, in the first year of Darius, the son of Aserus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, he's speaking, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make the request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. This is Daniel speaking to the Lord. He intercedes for us, for the people, for the, all the world. One of the great prayers in the Bible, like other great biblical leaders, Daniel was personally righteous, does not disassociate himself from his people's sin. Our request for mercy and restoration. And this morning we apply that mercy and restoration. Here are the elements of effective prayer. An open heart to the word of the Lord, first of all. And our power and conviction that God is ready, God is ready to accomplish his purpose and the observation of the disciplines of intercessory prayer. If you know what is intercessory prayer, pray for each other, pray for, pray for the others. No matter what is the difficult, no matter what is the problem, intercession, that is what Daniel was doing in this chapter. And I pray to the Lord my God and make confession and say, O oh Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him, this is in verse 4, and with those who keep his commandments. You know, it's ten commandments. Many people don't follow that, but they are very important. If you have time, Read, they are in the Bible. It is always appropriate to begin our prayers by focusing on God and His faithfulness. He never failed us. He never forsake us. He listened any request, any prayer. Oh, you know why? Because He's all love. He loves the humankind. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and revealed. But even by departing from your precepts and your judgment, neither have we hid your servants the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers, and all the people on the land. From the beginning, Daniel identified with his people in the need for repentance. Repentance is very important for us and for everyone around the world. And I repeat around the world because that's the truth. The truth is that everyone, 
is a sinner. And that's because we call to repentance today. We call to repentance today. <coughs> In verse 7 say, Oh Lord, righteousness belongs to you. These are very important verses. But to us, shame of face, and it is this day, and the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel. In this case, we say all the world. Those near and those far off in all the countries to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. This is a beautiful intercession. Daniel was doing it for the whole people. Oh Lord, to us belong shame of face to our kings, our prince, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. You see how he repeat, repeat the verses, repeat the prayers. Israel was disgraced by the captivity. They had trusted in wealth, religiosity, and a host of other things instead of God. All of those things had failed them. To the Lord and God belongs what? Everything, but especially mercy and forgiveness. To the Lord, I repeat, to the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness. Through we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he said before us by his servants, the prophets. Many people don't listen. Many people don't take action of repentance. Many people say, oh, okay. They preach the word of God. No, take conscience. Take and listen and open your eyes and your ears. Yes, all Israel has transgressed to your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been put out on us because he, we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his word which he has spoke against us and against our judges who judge us by bringing upon us a great disaster for under the whole heaven. That's because all the nations are in disaster today, in trouble and difficult. That's because, because it's not obedience. It's not obedience at all. In the law of Moses, that's because, and it is written, in the law of Moses, all the disasters come upon us. Yes, we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand you too. You know what? This is the time to pray. This is the time to intercede for the others. This is the time to pray for your brother, your family, your friends, for everyone. The Lord is coming. Therefore, the Lord has kept the disaster in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord, our God, is righteous in all the works which He does. True, we have no obey. And this is repeating the obey and obey and obedience and repentance because nobody wants to listen to His voice. It's no obey, obedience. God's word is absolutely reliable. The results of the obeying or disobeying are quite predictable. The fall of Jerusalem and the exile to Babylon. And now, our Lord God, who brought you people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name, as this is they we have seen and we have done weekly. Restoration of the sites will be a second exodus. You know what that means? There was the first coming, but the second coming is coming. I repeat, 
The second coming is coming. Oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray. This Daniel interceding is a beautiful chapter for your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and your people are a reproach to all those around us. Now, therefore, our God hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications for the Lord's sake, cause you face to shine and your sanctuary, which is desolate. Now, therefore, O oh my God, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and see our desolation and the city which is called by your name, for we do not present our supplications before you because of your great mercies. Because we think we deserve, I me, mean, no, we don't deserve nothing, nothing. He is merciful God. He is awesome God. He loves us, but we don't deserve anything. Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay. This is a claiming, claiming, claiming the Lord. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called for your name. Daniel's petition is based through the desire to glorify God's name. It's the only way we can glorify God's name. Intercede for the others. Pray for the others. Gabriel's message about the exile. Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision and the beginning being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. You know? There was the angel, angel Gabriel, appearing in human form to give the vision to Daniel. And he informed me and talked to me and said, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. We need to understand who is Jesus, who is God. We need to learn that skill. And this is a calling calling to learn that skill, to understand Jesus and his word. This is the word of God. This is the book. At the beginning of your supplication, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. The Lord Jesus called us, my beloved, my beloved. That's a beautiful word. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. The prayer of a righteous man, it's available. To conclude this teaching, in this teaching, it's surprising you because, because next week I, I will teach you about the 70 weeks, which is very important. And this is the third part, but the 70 weeks, has a reason for that. This is the number of the Lord Jesus, seven. He works with numbers. And the 70 weeks, it's coming next week. So I invite you to open your computer and see the, the next week, this week, and the next week. And follow the book of Daniel's series. The Son of God wants to give you the opportunity to be saved. Just open your heart and repent of all your sins to change your life. Pray this prayer and pray for your neighbor. Pray for your enemy. Pray for everyone in the world. Pray for the animals. Pray for being repented and obey. Obey. Obey is the word. Repentance and obey. 
repentance and obey. If I repeat this because every one of us need to repent and obey the Lord Jesus. And if you want to receive today Jesus in your heart, open, just say, here I am, Jesus. Do whatever you want to do in my life. Thank you for calling me to repentance. Thank you for calling me to obey you. I heard your voice. I need your voice. I need you to intercede for me. I'm really a sinner. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me this opportunity to change my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen and amen.